the end of the Joyce era. No one's upset about losing this baggage. I can't think of another business executive who's trashed their company's reputation so comprehensively and in such a short period of time. There was an air of inevitability about how Alan Joyce would leave his airline. He was never going to go quietly into the night. <laughs> He was always out there, very aggressive business leader, grounding the entire fleet during an industrial relations dispute, using his position to promote gay marriage, being an ambassador for the cheesecake shop. I don't know what that was about, excuse me. Always at the forefront of the public debate. Throwing his weight around. He badgered Australian politicians to reopen the borders with no regard for the implications of widespread travel during the coronavirus outbreak. Managed to get the airline through COVID and on the other side of the pandemic, he had all the ingredients needed for a new era of prosperity. A travel hungry public which was sick of pretending that a hard border enforced caravan holiday to Eniaba was fun. <laughs> A workforce ready to go thanks to close to a billion dollars in JobKeeper payments from Australian taxpayers and bugger all competition because Virgin was on its knees because of the COVID lockdowns. Alan had two choices, build a lasting legacy of public and corporate goodwill by ensuring his airline delivered a safe value for money product. Bravo! or jamming it up our asses with hugely inflated airfares and shit service in an unashamed strategy to bolster company profits and the size of his own short-term incentive payment, which is corporate wank code for bonus. Yeah, that's my message to you. F*** you and kiss my ass. And when his passengers pointed out that perhaps it was a bit rich charging five grand for a business class flight from Perth to Sydney in a seat that didn't even recline, he blamed us. I think our customers are not match fit. I'd say it was a let them eat cake moment, but there's no cake, because the Qantas meal kits look like they've come out of a school canteen. What do you want these beef hearts? On the floor. But he survived. He was the master of playing the government, that's why. Dangled the lure of a chairman's lounge membership and the tantalising prospect of seat 1A. Qantas board was missing in action. Now that Joyce has gone, attention will turn to the directors who stood by and allowed the national carrier to be dragged through the mud whilst ensuring they didn't get hit by any of it. Time to stock up on the Sard's wonder soap, Richard. Alan's not there to block the mud from hitting the chairman anymore. But you like Richard Goida. Everyone likes Richard Goida. Mind you, I'm contractually obliged to because he's the chairman of Telethon. But he's exposed here. The point of a chair is to bring a CEO to heel as and when they need to be. OK, I'm going to stop you right there. That should have happened months ago. Well, what happened here? The board got Stockholm Syndrome. Joyce is like Trevor Nisbet on steroids. <laughs> Alan Joyce knows the business inside out, and from an operational point of view, at this very critical point in Qantas's lifespan, the post-COVID resurgence, he was probably the best person for the job. But from a PR governance perspective, he was poison. Tough position for the board to be in, but the directors are going to have to get dirty now because they need to give newbie CEO Vanessa Hudson some clear air. They can't put her to the sword so early in her tenure. Someone else needs to take the body blows while she puts out a few fires. She's got to work out how to pay that ACCC fine. $600 million is what the competition watchdog wants from Qantas as a penalty for screwing passengers with flight credits that could never be redeemed. Guess who will stump up for that? Not coming out of Alan Joyce's pay packet, not Richard Goiter's. It'll be paid by shareholders, who are the same people who got screwed by the outrageous fares, lost luggage and sham credits from ghost flights that triggered the ACCC investigation in the first place. Looks like someone never got an upgrade. Not one. <laughs> now understand you don't even get the cheese and crackers. So, Do you know how miserable life is when you look forward <laughs> to cheese and crackers? That's the highlight? That'd be why. I'm Ben Harvey. For more up late, click the subscribe button below.